the channel. I'm Mordai J and we are locked in. This is episode four of Snowfall and it's getting better and better each week. Now we know there's a lot going on with Franklin. First, he got to deal with Teddy. We know that Teddy's been spying on him. Teddy also said that the prices are not dropping from 10,000 to 9,000. Now this is a problem because he's already promised Auntie Louie, Jam and Jerome, and Leon that we're gonna get them from 9,000 so we can make a larger profit. Now, with that going on, we know that Auntie Louie's already made a deal with Scully where they were gonna get them from 9,000, and that's where the whole thing with Mello happened. But now that they got the trust of Scully, it looks like things are gonna start moving forward in a better direction. Now, before we jump into this, shout out to the notification gang. If you're new to the channel, you wanna be a part of it, hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Hit that like button, it's the easiest thing you can do. Now, Auntie Louie, she got into it with Franklin at the end of the episode. We don't know how this is going to turn out, and hopefully we get to see that this week. So let's jump into it. This is episode four of Snowfall. FX is Snowfall. Now, everyone's been asking, is Franklin's mom, Sissy, still alive? Now, we know she left. She actually set up our boy Alton in Cuba. She made the breakfast, had the sundress on, and she dipped, and then Teddy came in. Well, she is alive and she's actually back. Now, when she comes to the house, she opens up, she's looking around, she starts reminiscing. She thinks about the first time that her and Alton and Franklin, they actually moved into this house and she was telling him how this is how you're living in the house. I remember growing up with less than this. So she's just thinking back about everything that's been going on in her life. Now, I call him Jam and Jerome all the time. That's because we don't call him that for no reason. We know when he started getting some money, he opened up a little stereo shop where you come in there, you get your subwoofers, you want your tweeters fixed, you want to hear that highs? Okay, Jam and Jerome's got it. Now, they're stacking up and putting bricks in the back of these cars, but you hear people saying there's not enough space. He's saying, nah, we're good. Once we hit those stashes, we'll make it happen. Now, he goes up front, he's like, hey, turn that up, turn that up. Now, someone is rapping. But what they're doing is basically snitching on the streets, talking about Franklin, Khadijah, Man Boy, and Jam and Jerome is listening to this like, man, what the hell? It's kind of like Famous in Raising Canaan. The streets need a body. They're rapping about the life they don't live, but it's exposing it to everyone that doesn't have any idea what's going on in the streets. Now, Jerome wants to know where did this tape come from? So, of course, he got to meet up with Leon. Now, this tape was recorded by some dude named Maurice, and he's on top of the roof dancing and stuff. And Leon's like, man, I told you, man, he's a weirdo. But we got to ask him, what the hell you know about these streets? What you know about Leon? What you know about Jam and Jerome? What you know about Khadijah, man, boy, Franklin? What you know about all of this? Now, they questioned Maurice, like, hey, bro, what are you doing with all this, man? You can't be rapping about this stuff. And he's like, man, I'm not snitching. I'm just talking about what's going on in the hood. Now, this would be fine if you weren't mentioning Franklin's name. Man boy's name, Khadijah's name, R.I.P. to Tiana. You can't mention these names now, R.I.P. to Tiana. You could do that. But everyone's like, bro, you got over 15 hours worth of snitching on you. He's like, man, it's just me rapping, bro. Now, Jerome, he's not really too upset about it. He just wanted to know who it was. But the police end up pulling up on the set. Now, I tell you, the cops pull up. We got hating ass Buckley showing up. Now, everyone else is getting put down. We got Jerome and Leon down, hands behind the head. Buckley coming over here, tough guy with the glasses on. He knocking over tables. These tables didn't have nothing to do with anything. We were just playing spades over there. We took a quick time out, go drink a 40, and we were going to come back because I had called seven books. Now, he did knocked all the <laughs> all the cards off the table. It's like, damn, Buckley. Franklin and V, they getting it in now. We know we got a kid on the way, so we got to be happy. We got to make sure everything is good because he's holding up his bargain right now, making sure that the family is safe. Now, he's talking about when he was growing up and the sandwiches that he was eating. But he gets a phone call and he's like, hey, I'm going to call you on the outside line because you never want to talk on your house phone. We see that it doesn't matter what show we're watching. Never talk on your cell phone or a landline. Never do it. But he's saying the projects got rated. I need to head over there. But everyone's been doubting V, right? And she's saying, well, let's go over there. Let's go handle this. So she a ride or die. Now, everyone's been speculating what exactly is going on with Peaches. Does he have a summer code? Does he have that three-letter HIV? Does he have that four-letter AIDS? We aren't too sure yet. We just know that you don't want to be anywhere around him when he's coughing. Now, Franklin comes into the, to the spot, and he's in here playing cards with everybody. He hops up because he's not on his P and Qs. You're supposed to be prepared at all times. You see what I'm saying? So he hops up, and everyone's laughing at him because they know he's supposed to be on his job. Now, hopefully, we get to see a little bit more on Peaches and see what's actually going on with him. Because I hope it ain't that. I hope it ain't that. Uh, in just a summer code. 
Now, the whole crew, they're meeting up. I'm talking Franklin, Jam and Jerome, Auntie Louie, Leon, because Leon is saying they are cracking down on the PJs. What the hell is going on here? But they got to know if they're going to keep coming at us like this, then we're going to come back at them. Now, Auntie Louie, she's the connection to Buckley. And she's saying, let me go check them out and see what exactly is going on. Now, Leon, he's not trying to hear that because that's taking too long. If this is your guy, you should already let him know that, hey, the projects are ours. Don't go over to the projects. But Buckley, he says that the white man above him, you know, hey, we all got to answer to somebody. And that white man is telling Buckley, I need you to start bringing in people. So when that pressure gets on him, oh, yeah, he's going to do whatever he can, excluding what Auntie Louie got going on, because your job is more important than your connections. Now, Franklin is trying to keep Leon under control because we know that Leon, when he gets it in his mind, he's going to go off and do what he needs to do because the projects are his. And that's where his money, his bread and butter is coming from. Now, in between this, Sissy shows up and she's like, oh, I came as soon as I, you know what I'm saying, as soon as I heard. Because you remember, she was on the phone with Franklin, but it was kind of chopped up. Now, she comes back and it's like, frankly, you haven't told them. But the good news is V is pregnant. That's why Jim and Jerome is like, What's going on here? Now, Jerome and Louie, they looking at like, what? Really? Y'all going to have a baby? Look at Leon. He's looking at it like, man, the hell with that baby. Did y'all, did y'all not hear me? We just got raided in the projects. It ain't no time to have no baby. He already knew about this though. Franklin came to the house when he was pitching. Hey man, I got Louie and Jerome put in 10 million, put in some money. So he already heard this, but they don't understand. The project is all he has. Louie meets up with Buckley and she's asking, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing, Buckley? What exactly is going on here? You're sicking dogs on my people? Your people at that? And he's like, them ain't my people. They sell drugs. And as far as I can remember, they made fun of me. They talk bad on my name. It's like calling me Westbrook when my name was Westbrook. No, them are my people. Now she's saying, look, I told you I'm going to give you somebody when the time is right. And he's like, until you give me somebody, I got to do my job and I got to crack down. Now, if that means going into the projects, then so be it. But you need to come up with a name because if not, I'm going to do what I'm scheduled to do. Now, Louis has to understand this is a job for him. Regardless to whatever he can do, he can only control so much before the boss is telling him, hey, I want you to go to projects, crack down. I don't care. Go over there. Now, Franklin is talking to Teddy about everything that's going on. The LAPD, they're cracking down the crash unit where Buckley works on the PJs. And Teddy is saying, bro, you're moving bricks. You're moving pounds. You're moving, you're moving weight. That's what they're going to do. Now, I don't have any control over that. But you don't have to worry about it because that's a black neighborhood. Now, if we were in a white neighborhood, they would be all over it. They would send the National Guard. So all I'm telling you, Teddy, is listen. We need help out here in the streets. And Teddy is telling Franklin, I got you. Just trust me. Lay low for a little bit. Don't be all flashy and things because the LAPD, I don't have any control over them. We can make this work. You just got to be calm. Now, Teddy doesn't understand how it is for a black person when you're getting harassed every single day. But that's what he's trying to convey to Franklin. Lay low. Move to work. And just be happy with what you're making. Leon shows up to talk to Ivy. Now, we know Ivy has everything you need when it comes to guns. And he's like, look, I need a couple of RPGs. I need a little bit of this. I need a little bit of that. Because we need to go back and forth with these cops. If they're going to be doing this, then we need to be prepared for it. Now, Ivy, he's an OG. And he's telling them, are you really thinking like that? If you really try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the police, they're just going to bring in more. And you're not going to be able to stop that. Now, Leon, he's just upset and he's in his feelings right now. You can never use your feelings when you're in the dope game. You got to be logic. That's all you can use. And Avi is telling him, look, just chill. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to do all of this because it can get ugly for you. But Leon is saying, I got money. If not, I can go somewhere else. Now, what Avi did was slow Leon down a little bit and say, these are specialty items, RVGs. You need all of this? Give me a minute. I'll get them together for you. This is at least going to give him a chance to at least talk to Franklin and see what exactly is going on with Leon because giving him RPGs on the streets, <laughs> that's not good at all. You remember Junkie Wanda came to Franklin for a job. Talking about, I used to run track. Look at my calves. We don't care. You're a junkie. You won't be around any drugs. 
Now she's over here doing things and handling them for the little apartments and the tenants that they have. And Franklin's like, all right, cool. And V's talking about, yeah, you did a good job. Don't worry about it. You use some of the rent that we got. If I'm Franklin, I'm thinking this is business. Don't use none of the money that we are supposed to be bringing in until you verify with us that it's okay. But V is like, oh, it's okay, queen. It's not okay. That's money we're losing. But Sissy shows up and she's like, oh, okay. I see what you got here. The West Side Development. Now, you remember, Sissy is actually the one that originally started putting together plans to start investing in the community to get Franklin about the game. Now, Junkie Wanda's talking about, oh, sorry, Miss Saint. I, 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 I was the one living in the house. I would have cleaned up if I'd have known you were coming. First of all, the place should have been clean. You don't own the place. You don't live there. You're staying there. If you're a guest anywhere, your room should always be clean. The place should always be clean. But Sissy, she's looking at him like, yeah, she's probably a previous junkie. I'm glad you're enjoying your stay. I'm not sure what's going on in Sissy's head, but I can only assume that I put this thing together. I want it ran how I wanted it to run. Or she could be looking at V and thinking, you're pregnant by my son. I don't really know you and you're running my project. Kind of the same thing Teddy was thinking when Grady was in his position. We're going to see how this plays out between them. But that's what I'm looking at right there. Sissy don't seem right. Uncle Jerome comes and talks to Auntie Lou and he's basically telling her, look, whatever little beef you and Franklin got, Y'all need to sew that up. Of course, we know he's going to take her side, but he also sees Franklin's side. You know what I'm saying? He's straight down the middle. I'm going to hear both sides and I'm going to go with whatever one makes the most sense. And he's telling her, you get that right, then we can get back to what we need to do. Also, I need you to get right because I haven't seen my sister in over a year and I love my sister. And she's like, all right, look, if you want me to get it right, then I'm going to get it right. So at least these two, I want to see them come together and make things work and get on the same page. Cause at the end of the last episode, he kind of took Franklin's side, even though he's with Louie, she got to get right within, but that's hard for her because she's dealing with Buckley. Franklin goes over to talk to Leon. You know, Leon is like his brother. And we know everything that Franklin and his mama has done for Leon. So he's saying, Hey, look, my mom's back in town. We're going to have a little dinner for, her. I want you to slide through. And he's like, man, I want to do that, and I appreciate everything your mama did. Because you remember, she was the first person to braid Leon's hair. Now, he appreciates everything that, you know, Sissy's done from him. But Franklin has to understand, man, it's it's going down here in the projects. My people, they getting locked up. They hitting that pipe. They doing all kinds of things. I got to be here. Now, tell your mama I love her, but I don't think I'm going to make up. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to make it to that. I can't make up for the time that I got to spend here. And Franklin, he doesn't understand that because you got to remember, Franklin is pretty much at the top of the food chain. Leon is actually out here having to work. He's the one getting bust up. You see, he got the scar on his head. To family, everyone's sitting down. Now, we're doing this for Sissy. She's back. We also know that Franklin and V got a baby on the way. So that's good. Now, Sissy's like, where's Leon? Is he going to show up? Because you got to understand, the heads of the organization, we're a family. And we already know Leon said he's not going to come because there's things going on in the projects. But Franklin is toasting to the family, and that's a good thing. Now, Sissy asks, is there going to be a marriage? What are we doing here? And he's like, well, what we're going to do is she's going to move in, and then we're going to, you know, saying, we'll get, we'll get married in the future, but right now we just need to primarily focus on the baby. Now, Auntie Louie is asking, so the baby with Franklin and V, is that the reason you came back? She's saying that's the push for me because there wasn't nothing else for me back where she was and we know she was in Cuba she made that breakfast for our boy Alton and Teddy showed up so we don't know if Alton is dead or not but we looked at Franklin Franklin's thinking I just had a conversation with Teddy something don't add up right but we heard her say that there was nothing left for her in Cuba so who knows let me know what you guys think is Alton alive or is he dead now I know I asked you guys what do you think and we know Franklin spoke to Teddy so uh, um, Auntie Louie wants to know what's going on. Where's where's the confirmation on Alton? And Sissy is saying Teddy got rid of him. Now, you remember all the BS that he was feeding to Franklin saying, oh, he's a high profile target. He's Black Panther. So this is kind of either Franklin knows it's the fact that Teddy got rid of him or he's trying to keep it under wraps because that's who he's dealing with. And he already told Auntie Louie that she can't talk to Teddy. So if they find out that he knows this, then that could be bad. And we're supposed to be squashing the beef between Louie and Franklin. 
I told you with all the information that Franklin knows about Teddy, Auntie Louie wanted to talk to Teddy, Sissy knowing that Teddy killed Alton allegedly, him being back, this is bad for everybody. If he was willing to kill Alton because he ran his mouth, there's no telling what he'll do to any one of us. As Franklin V and Sissy ride off, she wants to know exactly what's going on. How much danger are we in? What, what's, what's going on with the business, the development company? Now V is like, oh, don't worry about it, mama saying. Well, no, she's like, no, no, no. I want to hear from Franklin because everything is is starting to really pile up now, especially with knowing that Teddy is back. Teddy got rid of Alton. Teddy organized all of this. Franklin, what are we actually doing here? Now, Franklin, he knows that Teddy isn't right. We caught him spying on us last week when we did the drop with Gustavo. So he's not really saying much. But Sissy, as a mom, she knows my son isn't saying much. I know how he acts when he's in trouble. What's really going on here? We got to get to the bottom of this. Sissy goes to talk to Leon because he didn't show up. But you got to understand, she's still a mother. She knows that Leon is like a brother to Franklin, so she wants to make sure that everything else is all right. She knows he's by herself. He's running the projects. He's out here. He's making some money for himself. She also was with him when he was going through his little issues where he had to lay low. Now, she's comparing the people living below the poverty line in the projects to how it was in Cuba. And even though they did live below the poverty line, they still understood how to read and write and had some kind of literacy. And she's just telling them, there's got to be a better way, Leon. And that's all she wants for him is for him to understand that, hey, I'm here for you. And if you want to get out the game, then so be it. But if you're going to do it, then you need to do it right. Now, Jammin' Jerome, let's emphasize on the jamming. He's listening to this young kid's mixtape. OK, cool. You out here rapping a little bit of self snitching. Well, not self snitching, but snitching on the block. But this is, you know what I'm saying, this is, this is actually riding, you know what I'm saying? The kid got flow, the kid got bars. Let me listen to his next tape. What it's looking like is Jam and Jerome might be trying to go legit and actually starting up a record label. Because why not? That's how a lot of them started. Easy e took that dope money and made NWA. He ruthless records. Why not make Jam and Jerome off this money that we got and turn it into something legit? Now, the only problem is he's listening to this next tape and you kind of implementing Jam and Jerome. Talking about the uncle with the nephew. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jam and Jerome got a nephew named Franklin. No, 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 no. Now Jam and Jerome is just Jerome and he is upset. Franklin and V, they sit down and they have an actual talk. Now she's asking about Teddy because we already know he's been downplaying it. Just saying Teddy is back. Now he doesn't need to be running all this business by her. You know what I'm saying? His job is to protect her. I don't have any sympathy for her because she's talking about protect the child. You married a known dope dealer. You knew what he was into. So there's none of that protect. You joined up. You signed up for this. Now, she's saying, your mom, I like her. I support her. Don't push her out if she has something to say. And Franklin is like, all right. Now, V does admit that she was looking at his books. She was snooping around and she found a pistol and was like, what is this? And he's like, I bought this house for security. That's just extra security. Now, what kind of protection do you want Franklin to have for you if he doesn't have a pistol and you know he's in the dope game? I don't understand that. That's just a whole contradiction. He's in a dope game. He needs to carry a pistol. This man has been shot before. So you shouldn't be alerted when he has a gun in the house. Now, I underestimated V a little bit. She picks up the gun and says, I'm not worried about the gun. We good to go. He's like, whoa, where you learn that? But she's saying two girls in a Corvette. Thing one and thing two, that ain't enough security. We need more than that. Franklin's looking at it like, damn, would you learn how to do that though? So I, I got a little bit of respect for V. But then that brings in the theories of when people have been asking me, what do I think about her? Is she feds? I don't know. I don't know yet. Now she's saying she learned all that from her mama. You know what I'm saying? My mama's not gonna teach me how to use that if I can't use it to go and save her. Now Frank is like, is she gonna come back? Is she gonna be in our lives? Now, V said, if my mama comes back, we moving to Africa. So I don't know what's on, <laughs> what's going on with her mama, but they getting the hell up out of there if she comes back. Now, this is interesting. I didn't expect this. This gentleman's name is Ruben. Now, he says that a, a lady named Anna has told him everything he needs to know about Sissy. Now, since he did mention that she was on the flight back from Mexico City and he's like, OK, so is everything good? Now, Sissy is telling him I made contact with my family and Teddy is back. 
Now, this guy has to be an agent or somebody because he's saying, I know everything that the CIA has done to your family, but what are you going to do about it? And she's saying, look, as long as I can guarantee that my family is safe, you can kill. Listen to me, people. K-I-L-L, Teddy McDonald. Now, either this dude is with a cartel or he's with a different agency and they know that Teddy isn't with the CIA anymore. But this is interesting. We need to figure out who this gentleman Ruben is and who is Anna. Now, we already know what I'm about to ask you guys. What do you think about this guy Ruben and who is Anna? What information do they actually have on Teddy for Sissy to say, I'm going to give you information, but after I do this and you protect my family, you kill Teddy. We need to figure out who they are, and that's my job to dig in deep and find out who they are. Make sure you tune in Thursday night for the live after show discussion for this episode. I'm Odi J. If you like the content on the channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.